Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gizzard K, and today we revisit Kyren Horman's case. If you've never heard of this case, I would highly recommend checking out my playlist. We've done some deep dives, part one, two, three, and four, presentations, map time, snippets from the book uh, called Boy Missing by Rebecca Morris, press conferences, video clips, everything we possibly can. So this would be now boots on the ground footage that I've received that I'm including right after this quick little recap. As always, in every episode, don't be overwhelmed by the time, you know, an hour and a half or two and a half hours, because everything is time stamped for you. So it's really easy to just navigate to what you want to rewatch or what you want to see or catch up on. And especially from the first uh, episode there, the presentation I did should give you a really good overview of the case. If you search Kyren Horman missing, you'll find the FBI site. I've also linked it for you so that you can click on this, download the poster, print the poster, or share it on social media. It will be very helpful with the hashtag missing Kyren Horman or Kyren Horman or Kyren Horman's World Soldiers. So here's the flyer just to recap if you've never heard of this case. Missing person Kyren Richard Horman. He was last seen on June 4th, 2010 in Portland, Oregon, actually at his school where his stepmother had dropped him off and he was so excited to show everyone his red-eyed tree frog project. So if you see the little emoji that we have for members here at Grizzly True Crime, it's a little red-eyed tree frog and that is in honor of Kyren Horman. So they've shared some pictures here and the last one is actually an age progression photo. They say they're age 19 to 20 because he would be 20 years old now. He was seven when he went missing, which means that you need to keep an open mind with these photos, look at them carefully, and if you see anyone that looks like Kyron, if you think you've seen Kyron, please call the tip line. You just never know what could be the break in this case. So description, date of birth, September 9th, 2002, brown hair at the time, three foot eight, they say at the time of disappearance, male, scars and marks. Kyron has a distinct V-shaped strawberry birthmark on his forehead. So that's also a very distinct thing to look out for, right? A strawberry birthmark on his forehead. Place of birth, Oregon, eyes blue, weight 50 pounds at the time of disappearance, race white. They say remarks, Kyron was last seen wearing a black t-shirt with the letters CSI in green and a handprint graphic on it. He wanted to be a detective just like his stepdad. Black cargo pants, white socks and black sketches sneakers with orange trim. He wears metal framed glasses. Now, why did they mention all that? It's because if you're in the area which we're going to see from the boots on the ground footage, and you see any of those items of clothing somewhere there in nature, you need to call that in as well. Don't just be like, oh, there's a CSI shirt. <laughs> that could really help in this case, if you find something like that. Details, Kyron Richard Horman has been missing from Skyline Elementary School in Portland, Oregon since June 4th, 2010. He was last seen that morning after attending a science fair at the school. If you have any information concerning this case, please contact the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office at 503-988-0560. Your local FBI office or the nearest American embassy or consulate, which might tell us that they could suspect he may have at some point been taken across the border. He might be out of the country, something like that. You can also submit a tip online at tips.fbi.gov. They say field office Portland. So please do download, share, and if you could also like and share this episode just to continue to keep the word going for Kyron. Never forget Kyron. We will never forget Kyron over here. We stand strong with Kyron's family and friends to support them 
I can't imagine like going this long from 2010 until now with no answers. Lots of grand jury indictments, lots of investigations, ongoing investigations, but no answers yet. I really hope it will come soon for them. So before I show you the footage, let me quickly remind you of the map time that we've already done, just so that you could see the area where all this driving around is going to happen. The reason for showing the footage is so that you can literally see what the area looks like in case you didn't know number one, in case you live out there and something jogs your memory, in case you think, huh, I live close enough, maybe I could search some of those areas. You just never know if you could help. So this would be where Karen stayed with his stepmother and his dad and his younger sister, right? And so he went that day, June 4th, 2010, from his house to school, which would be the Skyline Elementary School. And that's the last place that he was seen. And around 8.45 a.m., Terry says she was the last person to see him. And the police have also said she was the last person to see him. Some people saw Kyron leaving with Terry. So... That is interesting. There were at least four witnesses that said they saw Kyron leave with Terry, which is why Terry has, throughout this case, through all these years, been a red flag. And I've tried to look at this case from every angle possible, and I can't deny that Terry, the stepmother, is a red flag. It just is what it is. So we're not accusing her of anything. We're just saying, damn, it's a red flag. And investigators are working very hard to try to solve this case. She's also got one of the best lawyers possible in Portland, Oregon. There's been lots of grand jury indictments and things like that. If Again, if you want the deep dive, you know where to go. So going from the house to the school, then Terry then drove to this northeast Embry Drive to go to a Fred Meyer. And then after that, she couldn't find what she was looking for there. So she went to a, another Fred Meyer, which is down here, where her gym also is. She went to the gym later. So then she said that her daughter had earache, and so she tried to soothe her by driving around for long, which some people say, yeah. I mean, I don't have kids, okay? So I've never, but I have had earache. <laughs> and I don't know if driving around for a long time helps, but some people say it can actually really help for kids just to calm them down, right? But she drove somewhere. Now, the exact locations are not known besides possibly around here by this northwest Newbury Road. But then the police have said that her phone pinged on Savi Island. But the thing is, there is not a tower right there. There is one further north. And so the thing that I would wonder is, let's say if there's anything sinister going on, I hope they've checked all the way up north here as well. You know, because as we know, Cell phone pings are not the most reliable unless it's in conjunction with a whole lot of other cell phone towers and other factors. And that's where we need that FBI cost team that we learned so much about at trials, especially. And we've seen lots of graphs and things. So apparently she was somewhere here. And what's interesting is that AWP Adventures with Purpose, they'd actually been out there and they went to Savi Island because they got a tip that said that someone saw Terry there like rolling a tire into the water. That's weird. But they didn't find anything. Of course, AWP mostly look for cars and things like that. So they did not find anything of interest when they were there to try to help in the case. I don't know about you, but I just, I never give up hope in these cases. I really hope that this case will never go cold, that there will be answers like today. Is today the day? Is today the day that there will be answers? Is today the day that there's a suspect that's arrested? I mean, look at us. Look at us with a Long Island serial killer case. From 2010, also from 2010, and now in 2023, they arrested someone. It's not impossible. And that case was actually said to have gone cold, even though they were still very much investigating. But what did it take? A new task force, fresh eyes and resiliency is what the commander said, and so or the commissioner. So that's the thing. 
fresh eyes. You just never know what a difference it can make. So please continue to search in the area. Please continue to share the flyer. It will help so much. And if, please continue to spread the word and just show Kyron's family and friends that we've got their back. As I always say, we are their Gatorade. When they've already run a marathon and they are so dead tired, they just they just can't anymore. We, we there to refuel them, to keep them going, to encourage them. If you saw my recent interview with District Attorney Isidro Alanis from the Burgos Aviles trial, then you know, that's what he said. He said, your encouragement means the world to us. And that's to a district attorney. So can you imagine as well for families that have missing loved ones, that have no answers, let's be their encouragement. So now I'm going to show you the footage that I've been talking about this entire time. Okay, we are at the beginning of Kane's driveway. We can't go to the top. And now we're going from the driveway, Kyron's driveway, to his house, to the school.
first Fred Myers turning left on northeast.
there's a lot of service road pullouts on Newberry and McNamee, Germantown. All these roads have logging access roads, fire lanes, I think is what they call them. Uh -huh. For bikers. And we're going to be passing through Forest Park. If you see a lot of these cars parked on the side of the road, that's because Forest Park access points are all along. Forest road. Park is a, is, there's a lot of walking trails for people to go down and walk through all these woods. And something that we've learned is Forest Park is a rainforest. We didn't know that.
lot of the training for, I think, I want to say Pacific Northwest Search and Rescue, they do up here at Forest Park. I have this on point five so that you can get a good look at the whole area. And what'd you say, the search? I've seen the search and rescue crews up here at this main, one of the main ones. Yeah, these they are definitely do their training in this area. I want to try to show you the drop off of these roads too. Destinations. 
that's where Dee Dee worked. I'm going to stop. Now this is just to show you. This is still on Old Germantown Road. We came down here to park or to turn around. And she could have just found something like this. You know, it's a pull off driveway. Just on this road. On the old, are we on Old Germantown or Germantown? We're on Old Germantown. We're on Old Germantown and parked a second truck there. But that was just to show you that. So this is West Wind Farms where Dee Dee worked on June 4th, 13000 Northeast Germantown Road. Or Northwest Germantown. Northwest Old Germantown Road. Sorry about that. And this is the outside, like the out You'll see perimeter that. of the farm. right over there that she could have walked out of. There's a gate right there that she could have walked out of. But all this is the farm that she worked on. And we passed one car on this road since we've been on it. There's another gate that she could have I mean, she could have jumped the fence. But behind this property right here, I've been back here. I believe there's a parking area right here. She could have parked her truck right here and that's where she could have she could have escaped through the back of the property right through there and the second truck could have been there but that's that's the property This is 
a stable that's been around for a long time. Is this time. the horse pasture? I don't want to say it's the one, but this right here to the right, they've redone it. It's been here for a long time, that little horse pasture. So they've redone it. A lot of people board their horses there. But it used to be... Now we turned a right stable. on Kaiser. Kaiser and we're Which? heading back up to Skyline, Skyline Elementary. Yeah. So here in a minute, Kaiser breaks off and will continue towards Cornelius Pass and we go to the right to on Brooks. So we veer off to the right to continue on Brooks instead of Kaiser. Right now we're on Kaiser Road. And this is the road that we took earlier. Same, same. <laughs> I would have never known that. But she did. She did, yes she did. That's it. but I don't think people realize how close Dee Dee's old German town was to Kaiser to Brooks to Skyline Elementary. Well that's I mean, why I think how that this video is gonna be so helpful. Like it's even gonna help people who know a lot about this case, you know. Yeah. Just visually seeing something like that. And what I was going to say about my experiences out here on searches and stuff, it's overwhelming. You get up and you're ready to go find Chiron, you just know you're going to find Chiron. And then you get out there and you actually see what you're up against, you know, is even the, just the side grass over here. You have to lift that up and sift through it. It's so overwhelming, You your dreams get uh, dashed real hard when you're out there. It's sad. Reality slaps you in the face. Because you're looking for a 50 pound little boy. Over which, hundreds and hundreds yeah, of acres of In 13 forest. years. I mean, yeah. look at out there. Look at all that. Just land. So if you look past the playground structure, right below the playground structure is the service road, which you cannot see when you are standing at the front door. So this is the front door. And if we walk to the right over here is going to be the side door that Terry claims she exited out of, which is also the door where the bus is. And if you took this way, let's just take this way first. So this is to the left. This is to the left, just to show everybody. First of all, I think somebody would notice, because this isn't just, you know. Well, throughout all this, you still can't see the service road where right. people are seeing. You can't Terry see Park. down there where Terry parked. At all. Like, not even the top of the street. And this is still in front of the school. School's right there. Walking over towards the soccer field. And that road. But from here, 
So there's a little trail for the kids or students to go down, which goes to the side door by Tyron's classroom. And they're doing some right construction. Now they're doing construction on the roof. So the scaff all this stuff wouldn't normally be there. This gate and stuff wouldn't normally be there. And there's like so where that staircase is, is the side entrance by Kyron's classroom. If you were to go right by the staircase, that's the side entrance. And there's a split staircase because Skyline is two levels. Let's see how close they can get to that one. It's going to be hard to see through the window. But there's a wall, and to the left of the wall, I think, is the little staircase that leads up. And then... Let me get in front of you. There's the soccer field, and that's the access road, right? Yep. There. But you still can't see down there where she would have parked. And this is now down at the bottom of the playground. show you this part later. We're going to walk around. But this is the soccer field and what's on the side. What is this north south side of the school? Yeah, that's the north north side of the school. Karen played soccer there. Okay, now we're going to walk back up and go You can't see up it, you know? Okay, so we are going to finish walking this way. And that's going up. So he drives his truck all the way down this thing to mow it. The maintenance man comes in here and drives all the way down here to After mow. He moves the gate. And this is over here at the maintenance entrance and by the skyline Turn sign. The left, you can't see the playground at all. Yeah, you can't that's see the, the front playground. Door. You can't see the side door. You can barely see the school. Anybody leaving or entering the school would not be able to see the access road from up there. It doesn't matter the length of the grass. It's yeah, the grass doesn't matter. Yeah, you can still see how you can see the playground. There's the flag. You can also see the top of the flag, but you cannot see it. I don't know if they can see it on the video. You can barely see the top of the flag. This is the maintenance access road that she parked on. And I think her truck was seen right about here. Which would make sense, because look where if it's parked right here, how not even anyone on the playground can see you. Mm -hmm. So if they're playing on the playground, they still can't see your truck. And then I'm going to look back up. Still can't really see. There goes the sheriff. Not one county. And I'm gonna go across the street to get a better view. This is at the Brooks Church, Brooks Hill Church, across the street.
the access road is right there. And then we'll walk up to the side door where she would have left from her and Kyron. In case you didn't hear through the wind, this is the side that the buses pull up on. And, and what? Where the parents get pick up the kids. Oh, I was just saying, this is the side they pull up on, and that's where they use the bus and well, We're walking up to the door that Kyron and Terry exited. The front. Got the gate there, but this, door here. this is from the entrance of the school. If you come over here, you can see the door. Like I said, they have construction, so they have all this closed off. That's the door that they would have left out of. And then <clears throat> walk down. And then if you walk down this way, it's the entrance to going back to the front of the school. Really cute area. This is what you see of the parking lot. A little butterfly. Let's see the cameras now that they now have. Have their little garden. And again, there's the church. Terry would have parked out there. And you can't see anything. So Terry would have walked out those doors. That's where the cameras are now. And she would have walked down this way, or she did, not would have. To the access road. Or to where she parked by the access road. That's looking out over the playground. You still can't see down there where Terry parked. Still the parking lot. This wall here, or fence, is where Kyron's original wall of hope was. And then they moved it down to the fire station down the road and then to the gym. But that's where she would have parked down there and continued to walk. Okay, we're leaving. So, leaving Skyline Elementary, we're headed north on Skyline Boulevard towards the intersection of Skyline and Cornelius Pass. We're going to cross over Cornelius Pass and continue up the north side of Skyline.
on Skyline Boulevard headed towards Rocky Point. On the left is Moreland Road, and I want to say a search was done on January 30th, 2011. There was for sure a search done in this area. So right here on the left is Moreland Road, and that drops back down into Helvetia as well. And this farm right here is where, is it Fred Hall? I can't remember the name for I sure. I think, I'll have to check on the name, but I think it was Fred Hall, and I have notes for him that I need to look up. At the time, there was we only one around. tower on Sobeys Island, and right now, this right here to the left is a cell phone tower. This little tree looking thing. So we're gonna turn back around. But I spoke to Fred Hall, and I wanna drive past where, uh, I think his name's Fred Hall, I'll double check on that. But I get his name mixed up with another man's. But he saw Terry back here where we're gonna turn around. He saw Terry park back there and uh, he said that he wanted to, he stopped and he was going to ask her and write it down her license plate because usually he, he has this little notepad that he keeps people's license plates on that he sees parked back there because you know he's a nosy old man. No, because this pull out right here, it's right where that corner is, so there's a big gravel pull out and that's where a lot of kids come and drink and smoke and so cops get called. So You're not supposed to go back there and I found that out because I went back, well I didn't get in trouble for it but I found it out afterwards. Anyways, this is his Fred Hall's property and that's that uh, cell tower, it looks like a tree. So it's on the corner of Northwest Skyline and Northern So this man, and I don't know that he's alive anymore. So he calls the cops on people who park right there. So, so we're on land. Skyline and Moreland. So right here to the Right left. here is where there was a search. See how there's that right service there. road? So pull up there. So he probably watches people who park right here. So this area was searched, I believe, like, there were horses out here, and there was all kinds of stuff. Uh, is this the area? There was horses. There's more than one. And then if you want to go to the left, I'll show you where. I'm going to walk down this way. Oh, yeah. To the pull-out and shoot it out. Oh. Mm. So we're on Moreland and Skyline still. Now we're turning back to show you where Terry was seen <clears throat> on a pullout. It was one of these first three pullouts. I'd have to look at my notes and I will dig them out when I get home. He's seen her parked here and he stopped and he was gonna write down her license plate, but he didn't. I'm gonna walk back, okay? He doesn't, he told me he doesn't know why he didn't decide to ask, ask her questions, but he's seen a white truck park here with a woman in it and she was wearing a ball cap. And I asked him if he saw a baby or anything sitting in there and he said no. And there was just one woman. But this is walking all the way back. But this is the stuff that has been searched through.
and then the road is right there.
me see what the name of it is. Northwest Trail Alliance is what this area is called. because it's 5.30 and in this area it is really um, bad traffic time but you wouldn't know that on these roads because there's hardly any cars. Another pull off. Another service road. Anywhere else in this town it's bumper to bumper. That was Colorado plate shift gear. Definitely gear biking. Yeah. trails off to the
lot of those pullouts on this road as well. A lot of fire lanes. And it's very overgrown and woodsy. And yeah, there's trails that locals from back in the day would know that us just driving by wouldn't even think yeah. twice about. Wouldn't even think it's a trail or that it leads to anything. But people like Dee Dee would know that. How was it said that her and Dee Dee met again? Through the gym? I believe so. That again, I'd have to check on that. I, for some reason, I remember reading like the 445 Club or something like that. So maybe when she was weightlifting mm -hmm. or when she was training, maybe that's when they met each other. Yeah, I'm not sure. But I don't know. I don't even know. If, did Dee Dee even go to the gym? I don't know. I, think I just so. for some reason I think remember she had a, She did a workout. Had a little workout session for a minute. Yeah. See, this is the road that I brought my Tahoe up at first. When it, there was snow up here, <laughs> oh my I was so scared. Why first of all, because I didn't know there was snow up here. There wasn't snow don't come, where we were. Yeah, don't come past October <laughs> through March. It's, it's ice. And I'm scared because the Tahoe's all big and I don't like Yeah, and this big road big is. I mean, it's hard for them to even fucking rescue you on this one. Triple A's like, sorry, we'll see you when the snow melts. <laughs> look at this, look at this though. Look how steep Hold that on, is. Hold on, let me get it. Yeah, look how steep that is. Holy shit. I mean, you can just roll. I hate to say it, but roll somebody down there. That's where we would need to take a drone. That's what are they called? Drone drones? I get them mixed up all the time. Droid. <laughs> I'm drone. old. I'm getting old officially. God damn it. Hey, stop. <laughs> I knew I was gonna mess up. Oh, this was where I got really scared. This is pretty though. It is beautiful up here. Look at me. Scapoos Fire District. Drive safely. They won't even come past here now. <laughs> so that's how, and my ears just popped again. We're going up, up, up. I mean, we're climbing a mountain here.
That's not the tower on Sobey's Island, though. No, that wouldn't be the one that it painted him. No, because that's not on Sobey's Island. So now we're well, passing. Well, I know it, but <laughs> we're passing McNamee. Passing McNamee Road, which is a road that it's talked about. Yeah, talked about and searched. Talked about as far as possibly Terry took that road that day. It's one that drops down to highway. Well, she must have sky because they yeah. searched it. I believe that's a road. That so Sobeys is up here on the right. My arms are gonna fall off. Sorry, Sorry you turned up here on the left. Yeah, I thought you turned left. <laughs> I was going back up, <laughs> back up the hill. Uh, Newberries past the Sobeys Island. back 
history. so much for watching i really hope that you will share this episode leave your comments below check out the deep dive that we've already done and please show the family lots of love and support again this link will be put in the description box if you want to download the poster and share it particularly in that area that would be a really good area to search but you got to keep an open mind as well it doesn't matter where you are at no matter where you live you could print out this poster and just share it wherever you can because Kyron may have been moved. Kyron may have been taken and, you know, moved out of the country, moved to another state. And so if you see him, use the age progression photo. Those can be quite accurate sometimes, huh? We've seen that in cases. Sketches, not so much, but these age progression photos can do a really good job. So have a look at it closely. Keep your eyes peeled. Be situationally aware. Stay safe as well. And I will see you in the next one.